Hey everyone, I'm okay, so today I'm gonna to be giving you some beauty blender hacks. Now maybe you probably know some of these, if not all of them, but maybe there's one or two you don't know about. So let's make a start. So the first one is that you can apply, now generally speaking, I don't recommend you apply skincare products with a beauty blender because it tends to absorb it, but you can apply an oil directly to your beauty blender. Now this makes it great if you've just used the foundation and the effect is just too heavy, it's too thick. Or if you want to um, change a matte foundation into more of a dewy finish, you can absolutely, there's that fly. You can absolutely just put a drop of oil onto the beauty blender. Now you can buy the tiny little beauty blenders and there's nothing wrong with them, right? It's just that they're so bloody expensive for basically nothing. And that's why it bothers me. So I just take a beauty blender, so this is my one, and I get an elastic band or one of these things, I don't know what they're called, and I just wrap it around, and that way I'm kind of getting the benefit of the smaller one so that I can use this part of the beauty blender for blending out concealer or nose contour, whatever it is I want, and I can use the bigger end to blend the foundations so that I'm not mixing the two together. So that's a great way. I just wrap something around it. If you're gonna use an elastic band, um, be very careful, don't over tighten it because these aren't cheap. There's that fly. I think it's been living here forever. Okay, so another one, you can add a drop of shimmer if you want to, or a shimmer oil directly to the beauty blender. Now, if you add a few drops, kind of just press it in, and then as you go over your foundation, you impregnate slightly the foundation with the shimmer because it's absorbed into it, so you don't get an overload. So for those of you who don't like powdery um, highlighters, applying it directly into it and working it in gives you a much softer, more beautiful effect. Now everybody knows, so I'm just gonna reiterate it, damp beauty blender, directly into loose powder, set the face, works beautifully. Now for those of you who have trouble with makeup lasting, spray your beauty blender with a setting spray, my favorite, as you know, Scandinavia. Spray it first, apply your foundation, spray it again, dip it into the powder, that works beautifully, beautifully well. Again, if you find that your foundation is too heavy or too thick, you can apply a little bit of primer to your beauty blender and go over it. That will shear things out. Generally speaking, I always think it's best for people to start their foundation wherever there is problems. So for most people, it's a center and you blend out. Some people, they've got more discoloration here, so you'd start here and blend in however it works but that's how I prefer to do it. Now, never, ever, ever buy cream blushes because, I mean, they're really pretty, right? But why do you need a cream blusher? You've already got a cream blusher in all your lipsticks. This is a Jelly Baby palette. You know, the jelly beans, I just ate them and then depotted lipstick. Tiny bit, blend it out. That's all I'm saying. Don't be wasting money on cream blushes unless you really have to um, because I just think it's mad. Here's another little tip with regards to the Beauty Blender. If you find that your lipstick is irritating, as in it's not really lasting very long, apply your lipstick, take your damp Beauty Blender, spray it with a setting spray, dip it lightly into a powder, and then bang it off on the back of your hand. Go over the lips with it completely, then take the setting spray, spray it again, go back over, and then reapply one more coat of lipstick. Bulletproof, baby, bulletproof. Also, when I mentioned about squeezing it so it's small, you can apply the powder right to the outside corners. This creates a barrier, that sandbag effect, therefore the lipstick won't move. Generally speaking, especially with a damp beauty blender, don't apply it to a pressed powder. Doesn't like it, you're gonna, in, uh, you're gonna sort of put a damp product into a pressed powder, you're gonna destroy the texture, so don't do it. Also, here's a little tip as well, or a hack, however you want to call it. Whatever side you use the beauty blender to blend the foundation, keep one side completely clean. And the reason for that is because oftentimes our foundations, because we tend to use the same amount regardless of our skin condition, we can use the lighter side in order to blend edges. So we're not adding more makeup to it. So by keeping one side slightly clean, you're able to re-go over certain areas and that makes the makeup look more beautiful and more realistic, I think. 
Also, if you're going back to the oil technique, if your concealer is starting to look horrific before you've done anything, again, you, I mentioned this before, you can add just a touch of oil to the back of your hand and just dab it on. And I, and I mean a fraction of oil and dab it across that area. Then go back in with a beauty blender and a bit of setting spray just to go over it to seal things in. That works beautiful. I don't actually know if these were hacks. Were they hacks? I'm sure you'll tell me they weren't in the comment section. <sighs> what can I say? Anyway, these are my favorite tips, hacks, tips, tricks for a beauty blender. Thanks for watching. Now don't forget, you can share this video. It really does make a big difference to me if you share a video. I probably have the lowest retention of sharing ever. It's quite piss poor. Okay, thanks so much, bye bye. Okay, so if you've made it to the end, it's now time for the ramblings once again of a middle-aged man. That's me. So if you watch any reality TV stuff, Housewives, Big Brother, um, I don't know, Love Island, anything like that, you always see this thing, right, where, where somebody will come up and say, don't talk behind my, don't say it behind my back, you say it to my face. Now let me tell you from a man that is 40, I want you to talk behind my back. Talk all you want behind my back. Don't come up to my face and say it. I don't want to hear it. I would much rather you did it behind my back. I have no interest in hearing the horrid negative things. Don't say it to me. And I always think that when they're like, say it to my face. I don't want you to say it to my face. I want, I'd rather you were false and were just pleasant to me than really unpleasant and were telling me things about myself that I don't really need to hear. You know, some people, and there's no malice involved in it, but some people will message me and say, you won't believe what this makeup artist has just said about you. And I just think, well, what I didn't know until now, and I was quite happy in that ignorance, which is very nice. And also it says more about them who are saying something bad than it does about you, because I'm not gonna to respond to it. I don't have any interest in being unpleasant to somebody. I don't want to, I'd just rather say nothing. That's how I feel. But that's my thoughts on when people say, Show it to my face. No, please don't say it to my face. I'm a nice person, I don't want to hear it, and I don't want to say anything bad about you. If you've got something bad to say, fine. But don't do it to my face. Feel free, behind my back, all you want. It might just be because I'm older, but that's how I feel about the situation. Do it to my face. Please don't, it's not nice, and nice is important. Thanks so much, bye bye.